Now we move on to a panel discussion. Um, we're going to talk about the topic in, in, uh, that's framed like this. In an intensive IPO market, also with a very strong stock market climate, um, we're going to talk about the power of innovation here in the Nordic region, uh, taking niche companies to a global position, and also how a marketplace like, marketplace like NASDAQ promotes the success of technology companies like we're talking about here today. So, waiting here uh, next to me uh, is Per Anjansson, board member at AEC Clyde Space. Please take a seat. And you're also CFO and investment director at Kaolinske Development. Welcome. And we met you already, David Vendel, CEO at First Venture. Please sit next to, to uh, Per here. Thank you. And also we have with us Håkan Sjögren, managing director, uh, director listing Sweden at NASDAQ. Yep. Excellent. All right. So, let's talk, start talking about Stockholm a bit. Um, how come that Stockholm has been able to become such a bright star in this field when it comes to unprecedented numbers of listings and uh, equity financing? Would you like to start with this? Yeah, of course. Uh, I think we, we can't just pat our own shoulders all the time, but I think we have to thank a little bit the... The politicians in the early 80s, when they decided that we should have some sort of tax break on capital gains, and with the Allemans Fonder, and that gave Sweden a, a head start, to, to contrary to other com countries, with getting people interested in, in buying into stocks, buying into the market, and that has helped all these companies and gave us this, this fantastic ecosystem that we have today. And we've talked about this before here at the Neventus events. Okay. And how, how do we, how can we sort of make this happen? Or what, is, what, is, what, is, what, what, are, what are the implications of this for other markets? Is, we are a bright star when it comes to this. How yeah. can we inspire other markets to We have to already done that. I've been sitting with, the, with one of the ministers in Denmark and they came to us maybe five, six years ago and asked, how the hell, sorry, can you have this fantastic market here and you are taking our Danish company and mm -hmm. list them in Stockholm. And this was one of the things and they actually put in the a sort of ISK, Investeringsparkonto mm -hmm. in Denmark as well, though they limited it to 50,000 kroner, which is not really what we have, so, but it was a start mm -hmm. to get this going. And uh, I mean, since Nasdaq is running the, the first North market, both in Finland and, and uh, Denmark as well. So we know the differences. We have exactly the same rules. So it's not more difficult to take a company like these guys to, to, to Nasdaq in Helsinki or in, in Copenhagen. But all the things around are a little bit more or very much more developed in Sweden. Hmm. Well, thank you for your perspective here. And uh, David, how about your perspective on this question? Well, I completely agree. Um, with the government um, regulations that helped boost this, as mm -hmm. well as during the 90s, where we had the incentives of getting home computers, boosting entrepreneurship was a big thing. Mm -hmm. But for me, that I've been living abroad for quite some time in the US and the Middle East, I relocated back to Sweden about a year and a half ago. And one thing that struck me, uh, struck me moving back was the size of Sweden. It's relatively small, which is a great thing, I believe, when it comes to entrepreneurship. because. One, big global companies tend to overlook Sweden in their expansion phase. We can just mm. look at Amazon entering quite recently. And I think that's a fuel for entrepreneurship. We miss that kind of innovation, and if it doesn't come to us, we make it ourselves. And I also think that the size of Sweden um, helps in another we're more of a mental aspect, and that is most of us, we know people that are entrepreneurs, so friends that, that know people that are entrepreneurs. We can run into Jakob Tejar at the street or Daniel Ek at a restaurant, and just the fact that we get to see these people, they are not fictional entrepreneurs sitting somewhere in Silicon Valley hiding, mm -hmm. that is a big mental boost yeah. that helps us take the step and, and really have the courage to move on to this. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the system around it, um, the, the exit possibilities through an IPO or through other other types of exits that could also fuel reinvestments in companies. So I think the climate here is, is fantastic. Thank you, Darby. Would you like to add, Pat? I think you covered most of the things. Uh, it's, it's kind of a Hollywood effect where you get, yeah. it's, uh, and now you can look back and see the reasons why we ended up here. And I think you mentioned most of those. Uh, one, one thing maybe is the collaboration also politically from Telia and going back to 70s and 80s, that they actually bought 
innovation from uh, to, to foster su the supply of new innovation and, and help small companies. Uh, Ericsson was in there as well. Um, and that co has continued. The collaboration between industry and academia is actually exceptionally good in Sweden, mm -hmm. I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something we hear from elsewhere as well. Um, but this Hollywood effect, if you call it that, is that now you have all these reinforcing cycles happening with entrepreneurs, investors, regulations in the market, access to capital, um, and actually people who have done it and gone global with their companies know how to do that, so we got the confidence. It's difficult to just copy that. It takes time. So would you say that um, Sweden is able to keep our status or as, as, a, as a very well-renowned tech market? And, or what, what are the challenges here to, to, to this continuous high status? Would you like to continue, Pam? I, I think going back to s this interest to invest in risky companies, uh, it's because the lower tax with the ISK, for instance, uh, and also the low interest rates, of course, and you know, if, if you take away the fuel, mm. that is the capital, by limiting, for instance, which is now discussed politically, mm. the ISK mm -hmm. and so on, I think that will be a major effect, actually. So on, that is the this. major challenge well, Regulations such as hampering that, also mm. making it more difficult for people coming to Sweden, talent to come here, it's difficult to find housing in Stockholm, mm. it's too expensive, or difficult to find, basically, and, and it's difficult to actually get a permit to stay, such things are actually uh, st stopping the f this a bit. And this is, of course, involves politics uh, moving yeah. forward. So, yeah. Håkan, your take on this? Yeah, yeah I think it's totally right. I mean, the politics is the thing that could change this, this head start that we have had. And, mm. and because, we, I mean, this, you talked about the ecosystem and, and what we see when we compare us to other countries. I mean, we are small, as you said. Uh, I mean, the, my colleagues in the U.S. last year, they couldn't believe it when we listed so many companies. It was like almost as many as they did, and they are 30 mm. times bigger. Mm. And that's pretty amazing to see. Now they have out outrun us this year because they, the IPO market is very good there as well. Mm. But if we compare us to similar countries in the Nordics and in Europe, we have so many smaller and medium-sized advisory firm that can help. I mean, we have this Aventus guys here, for example. Mm -hmm. You don't see that in many, other, in many other countries. They have their big investment banks, and sometimes you can't cover the whole part. So we want, we have these certified advisors, uh, corporate finance firms that will, that will help these smaller firms. And that's difficult when you are a big investment bank to do this. So I think we have a very good setup right now, and something that can can destroy it is that if you like, uh, let's like you said, the uh, yeah lower the ISK, ISK for example yes. or something. Mm. I mean, it's, it's more these things. Mm. Would you like to add, uh, David? Yeah, I think I completely agree with Per. I think the big thing <laughs> threatening this could be the politics and regulations. Mm. We all know about Tayyab Shabab, uh, a very gifted developer that had to leave Sweden because mm. of a clerical error, which was very unfortunate. Mm. And we started out this day uh, hearing about one, one of the biggest challenges for Swedish companies is attracting talent. And everything from housing and the possibility to come here, that could threaten the entrepreneurial climate. And we have a perfect infrastructure right now. So yeah. it's very important to just protect that and make sure that everyone can come here. Mm -hmm. So also here in the Nordics we have a very strong tradition of, of um, smaller companies going public. And of course this is, is, is what you're doing like quite a lot of, in, your, in your company. Mm -hmm. uh, and this has also enabled further development of, of um, well, de de development of unproven businesses and te te technologies. Um, so what is your take on this phenomena being spread into other businesses? Uh, apart from what we're talking about here today. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't get the question. Mm. It spread into other like Other markets and regions, oh. this, this phenomena. I think you're probably better to Yeah, but that then I think we need to, the other, uh, other markets need to, to get up with, with, with more people that can help the companies. Because, mm. I mean, these young companies coming in maybe from, like you said, from Karolinska Development, they come in small companies, there are a lot of researchers only and, and mm. professors and, and very clever guys and then you need, but maybe they're not very used to do IPOs and take, mm -hmm. bring in money and they need the lawyer parts and everything. So I think they need to, to get a 
step up the advisory side in, in many countries to be able to, to help these companies in the early phase because it's, it's, uh, you can be as yeah, super professional in something, but mm. this, is, this is another thing that they're not used to. Mm. And also take care of the, the uh, investors. Mm. This mm. must be something that you're familiar with from your perspective. Yes, mm. yeah. venture capital is definitely yeah. a, 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 an important part in the chain, mm. yeah. so to say. Uh, was your question more related to the, the MTFs here that's spreading yes, that to the yes, other exactly. markets? Yes, okay. exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm not really on top of all the MTFs around in Europe, but I no. mean the relation has been there in place since 2005, I think, or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not only having the possibility to do it, you have to have the other things around it, which we have here. But I think maybe you are. No, I think there's one working quite well in Germany, and we actually copied AIM, uh, which was 15 years earlier. Um, which uh, so, so there are other markets already doing it. If it will spread, I, I think they I would think like to, it, but yeah. it's not easy. It's also a little bit about putting the right rules and regulations for these markets as well, and it's it's a sort of, of a balance between easy access and, and also being a little bit uh, tough on the company, so we don't see any scandals and stuff like that as well. And that's a little bit of a, of a challenge to keep it on the right level. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, I mean, just go out in Europe and see there are not many of these that are attracting so many companies that we do in little Sweden with 10 million inhabitants. Mm -hmm. uh, mm, that's quite unique. We should uh, be proud of this, and I guess we are. Yeah, we are, yes, yes. Uh, definitely. We look proud. And, <laughs> and as you said before, we are... You said we are so such a small country as well, mm. so everybody know each other in some way. We, I mean, if some client call me and they ask for something, and then I always, you know, somebody that can help them. Mm. And that's that's not the case in, in major markets. I, I mean, bigger I, markets I don't think the so. same same way. No. So, David, uh, would you like to add anything here? Uh, no, I think Moses said it is sort of a stars aligned concept. We mm. have everything going on for us here right now. I think the demand is out there in a lot of other markets, but they, they lack some sort of components to get this to the same stage as we are. Uh, it's not impossible that they will get there. I think a lot of them are striving to, mm. but what we have here is it, it's really good. Let's, let's dwell on, 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 on um, finan the financing uh, situation a bit. Uh, in Sweden and also in the other Nordic countries, we've had... Um, a good history of, of, uh, of growth companies being able to finance themselves with equity uh, in connection with gro growth market listings. Uh, do you agree on this? This is the case we can talk about? Yes, great. So do you see this as one of the important reasons uh, of why, unproportionately, many uh, tech companies have succeeded here in Sweden well, and also in the Nordics? Dobby. I think so, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and, I mean, we started out this discussion on the development in the 80s and 90s, mm -hmm. and those successful companies that are now unicorns have made exits, some through IPOs, some other ways of doing exits, but that kind of capital is, is reinvested into new companies that can grow. And that kind of, of trickle effect, I think, is helping a lot. So without that structure and the environment we have around listings, I don't think we would be the entrepreneurial country that we are today. Mm. Thank you, David. Pa. No, it's open up for a lot of private investors uh, who would like to see a liquidity uh, in their holding. And if you, then you can take the risk because you know you can actually get liquidity not too far away. Mm. So it, it really has helped smooth the, the whole system a lot. Mm. And it's uh, unheard of, I think, to, to have that access to so much capital in such early phases. We should also remember there's a big risk with yeah. this because there are lots of companies out there and I'm also uh, responsible for some of that, <laughs> uh, who, who will need more capital, and if the, there's a downturn in the market, it might be quite tricky to be listed, actually. Mm -hmm. um. Okay. No, but it's, it's true, and, and we also have to thank, we have, we have Almi and we have Innova and, and these guys as well, helping the companies early, early stage, and, uh, and uh, Angels, and then, yeah. Then we have this market, and uh, I mean, especially in your sector with, with life science companies, it, it, I mean, these companies need money. That's 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 the way it is. Uh, and we have many companies in this sector, and uh, they can come in and ask for more. And so I think also it's like you said, it's, it's important to keep the, a good liquidity in the shares, so investors can get in and out in an easy way. So that's a, sort of a, a takeaway for the companies that are going in that 
make sure that you spread enough shares so we can have a good liquidity in the shares and mm -hmm. then you will have an easier time on the market. Mm -hmm. So David, you've been presenting here today, but let's, let's ask now um, Per and Håkan about what, you, what are your main takeaways from the first half of this day listening to the presenters? I'm sorry, I was not here. I was actually in another meeting. <laughs> I, th I thought I saw you earlier on. Yes. All right, so let's start to walk I, I, I was here uh, and listened to the, uh, the last three ones. Uh, mm -hmm. And I know these guys since before. I've listed them all three on our market. So, so good choice of companies. Good to, choice to of companies. Yeah. Good choice of and, companies. And I must admit that, that uh, with 135 listings this year so far, uh, and a pandemic, so I haven't met on many of them in a long while, so it was very nice to meet all these people in, in, in real life again. Mm -hmm. So, uh, thank you for arranging I see this. a lot of happy faces here. It's yeah, nice to be able to, to meet in person. It yeah, is it is, fantastic. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, yeah, and, and also that, I mean, we have, takes a lot of time to bring in the companies that we have, so it's a little bit uh, backlog on the retention, so <laughs> to say, so mm -hmm. I'll try to do my best. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I have one question here that's actually, I didn't prepare, but it just popped up because yeah. when, we, when you spoke about that it's easy to meet people and that you, that you can call each other and you know each mm. other. When we look at the statistics for, for Sweden, um, only 1% of, of venture capital goes to companies that are founded by women. And of course, we know that we, we like to hang out and talk to people mm. that are more like ourselves. It's, mm. it's, that's just the yeah. way we were run as, as yeah. uh, biological creatures. Yeah. So how do we get about this so we don't lose companies that might be, um, should be, uh, be able to, to de develop uh, in this sec Well, if you look at gender, because that is a topic we need to talk about. Mm. So how do we navigate in this so we don't sort of... In fact, just mm. since I'm in venture capital, mm -hmm. I, um, I mean, we don't discriminate in any way or I mean... I don't think it's discrimination, it, and, and it's more of, of making sure that we have that ear open. In life science there mm -hmm. are actually quite a few female founders mm -hmm. and, and researchers, so I think it's fairly 50-50 I would say in, in that sector. Mm -hmm. That's true, it's, but it's that, different So that yeah. goes Technology. more along where maybe there is a more equal balance, gender balance in that industry in general. In IT you have another balance for instance, and, and I think that's reflected. If venture capital invests less in, in women-founded companies, I I can't see that. It's actually really. only I one percent that goes to companies yeah, that are founded by women. I don't think it's the fault of uh, actually discarding that or mm -hmm. any. I I just don't understand those figures actually because mm. you don't people don't really care if it's a woman or a man. It's it's what the company is and what the opportunity is, mm. I would say, but that's my view. Mm, it's just the, the, the numbers, the statistics are staggering, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's just scary. It's, it's important to bring it up. Yeah, David. And, and this is a big problem, and, uh, and I mean, we, we should definitely try to infuse more female entrepreneurs uh, uh, from scratch and in the funding mm. rounds as well. From First Ventures' point of view, we're working actively with this, um, trying to find both ways of identifying uh, female-driven uh, companies through female networks for entrepreneurs or for investors. Um, but I think a, a big part of this is, is giving the courage to women and the education as well, because now we're talking, at least some people are talking to men in one way and women in another when they're in a, at the young age. I think this is moving away, and I think we're getting a lot better, but I think it's important to encourage young women to take these steps and becoming entrepreneurs as well, right? because the, the big unicorns we're seeing now are mainly driven by, by men, and we need to boost the, the female role models that we have, because there are a lot of them. Even though it's only the 1% of equity being held by women, I think we should really try to raise awareness of this and, and try to make them the role models they deserve to be. Mm -hmm. Thank you, David. But it's because otherwise we might lose talent and we yeah, might lose uh, well, m ways of making money and, and changing the world, right? Yeah, yeah sure. Mm -hmm. sure. Would you like to add anything? No, we, we are mm -hmm. very happy when we had revolution rates listed. A little exactly. while ago, she was so, the first yeah, yeah, I know she was female the first. founder yes. that got all the way, yep. and uh, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. and, and actually, we have in the U.S. we have introduced something that the companies that are getting listed there need to. We have put gender equality, or also not all these more equalities that they have in the U.S. It's it's uh, more more than gender mm. into the companies that they have to like in the in the code of, of corporate of conduct, governance yeah. uh, to the companies there. Uh, we are 
pushing the companies when they come to us to look over their structure and how it looks and, and asking them the questions uh, how they can do to, to improve their equality in, in their boards and, and uh, management teams. Uh, but uh, yeah, so we're trying, but it's, it's, uh, it takes a while, I guess. Mm. Well, thank you for, for uh, answering that question. No, no, and sorry. thanks for, for hanging out here for a while and with this panel talk. And now we need to, to get some food, right? Okay. It's time for lunch. Thank you. Thank you very much.